Okay, we're back again. And uh, as we said from the last episode, we're now going to move right into Joe's own approach, why he came to his conclusion. What can he add to this whole discussion? Because he comes from a Jewish background, an area that most of us are not uh, aware of and uh, do not have the expertise on. He does. So, Joe, thanks for coming back again. Come on and tell us what is your own approach and how is it you've come to your conclusion and what can you add to this and the whole discussion? Thank you, Jay. Well, I'll just uh, get into it then. Let's open up this presentation. So as we've mentioned before, my own approach, I, I myself have focused on the Abrahamic religious context without resorting to any Abbasid hegemony. Um, and with that in mind, I seek to seek a synthesis of what everyone else was saying first and only then to flesh out a theme, I would accept some, just some of the Abbasid comments, comments, not narrative, which either go against the Abbasid grain, they go against the standard Abbasid narrative, or appear to echo or be supported by non-Abbasid evidence. Okay, so that's, that's my approach. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these. So now, looking at non-Abbasid evidence, looking at things which are not affected and don't seem to have any... Um, relevance to the standard uh, Islamic narrative. There is this relic which has been discussed before, so we won't go into it in great depth. Uh, there's this relic of uh, the original official story which was um, taken to China during, during the Umayyad times. It's based on uh, this text. This is the summary of information from the Jutang Shu, which was uh, written in the year 945 AD in China, though, with no reference to the standard Islamic narrative. And it's a re it's it's rewriting um, the documents the the the, the, the evidence which was um, written down in this in the seventh century by court officials. So it's just kind of a a, a, a revision on that. And um, the Chinese had no, no axe to grind. <laughs> so basically, though, they say, and it could be garbled a little bit, but they say that during the year of the Dai year, you've heard this before, so we won't go into too much. During the year of the Dai year of Su dynasty, there was a subject of Persia herbding camels, there's a key word, in the Mount Kufan city-state. Uh, one day, the lion man suddenly appeared telling him there are three caves on the west side of Mount Kufan city-state. A large armory, another key word, is stored inside the caves, and you can go and retrieve the weapons there. There's also a black stone with texts carved on it. You will become king. If you read and do what the carved text and the black stones tell you, this is a very unusual story and it seems a bit odd at first. But the key words are those red words camels, Mount Kufan, that's Kufa, the lion man, uh, armory, king. These are the key words we have to pay attention to. Now, this is a little map, um, it's, a, it's a topographical, topographical map showing the depressions and elevations around Kufa. This is Al Kufa. This little 66 foot mountain here is Mount Kufan, it's tiny. And down here we have Alhira, not so far, it's actually walking distance. And up here we have some more elevated mountains and things like that up here. So, so this is the area of Iraq we're talking about for this story. Very important to pinpoint this area of Iraq um, since it's in South Iraq, as we heard Fred Donner suggesting in our last video. All right then, so now what we have, as I said, we're looking for echoes, corroborations, or things that go against the grain from um, uh, from what the Abbasids might be saying. And we have a corroboration based on the history of Al-Tabari. Um, uh, and the reference there is in the bottom corner. It says that when the Nasrid al nutman had become fearful of Khosrow II, he had deposited his coat of mail, his valuables and other arms with Hani ibn Kabisa of the Bakr tribe. Okay, so these are the key words which are highlighted here. Nasrid is uh, actually uh, Nazara. He, he could have been a Nazarene. Um, um, the Nasrids were a dynasty that ruled the Lachmids. The Lachmids area, kingdom, was ruled by the dynasty of Nasrid, the Nasrid dynasty, which basically means a Nasra dynasty, a kind of a Nazarene dynasty, which is the Judo-Nazarene connection there. So um, al Nutman was this leader of these people. Now remember, the Nazarenes are the scions of the house of David, from whom the lion of Judah comes. So we've got this lion man here. So we've got this lion man here who had become fearful of Khosrow. 
he went to this Ibn Kabisa of the Bakr tribe. Now, the word Bakr, I know I'm going to get a lot of people who don't know Arabic very well pushing back on it. I do recommend you go and research the meaning of the word Bakr before you say this. But Bakr is young camel. The Bakr tribe was a camel herding tribe. That's why it's called the Bakr tribe. OK, so we've got the lion man. We've got the camel herder. And this happens in Hira. And we just saw how close Hira is to, um, to um, Kufa. This is very, very close. There's the armory in the story and there's the, the leadership instead of the king. So we've got all the key elements there in this story corroborating something which probably the, the Muslim um, um, community writing this uh, standard Islamic narrative never imagined that there would be a record of the Umayyad um, uh, official uh, origins in some uh, dusty old book in some um, ambassadorial sort of archives, state archives in, on the other side of the world, which would be uh, rewritten and, and preserved in a tiny, tiny book called the Jutang, in a tiny section of the Jutang Shu um, hundreds of years later. But despite that, a corroboration. And I'm very interested in this. I think this is fascinating. So we have uh, a corroboration there. This is the true original Umayyad idea of where their state began with. It started with this lion king, <laughs> if you like, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Nasra, the Nazarene, al um, and that's your Judah Nazarenes, which is very important for, for Odon's uh, theory too. We've got the Bakr tribe, the camel herder in Hira, the armory story there, and uh, so that's a wonderful corroboration. Okay, so we have an echo, and here, by the way, is a picture of those caves up in the um, uh, uh, Mount Kufan sort of area. Uh, those are the caves which I just showed you. This this white elevated area down here in this depression creates a nice sort of setting where you can get these caves. And this is a photograph of the caves in that part of Iraq. Okay, so that's the first the first um, hint, the earliest clue that we have to the origin of some kind of Umayyad story. Very very different from the um, uh, from the, the standard Abbasid narrative, because of course this story about the um, about the Nasrid king uh, giving his weapon of his armory to this uh, leader of the Bakr tribe, this is not about the origins of Islam. Tabari is just writing simply about the the history of Iraq in this story. This story has got nothing to do with Islam, and yet uh, it is corroborating a story about the origins of the Umayyad state in Iraq <laughs> from Chinese sources. So what do you think about that? You've come across it before, but it's worth holding in mind. That's all I've got to say on this one. Ju, Ju Dang Shu, um, it was yeah. Mel that really brought this to light, I think, earlier on. Uh, he was the one that first came across it. Right? It's been a number of years ago. But listen, this is um, this is really what we're looking for. Thanks so much, Joe. You, you're, you are suspicious of the Abbasid material. You have used Interestingly, Al-Tabari from the Abbasid material, who died in 923, and you're using him to corroborate what the Chinese were saying earlier, uh, which is more historical. They don't have an axe to grind. They don't have any agenda. Uh, they are neutral. And because of the fact that they are neutral, uh, it, we do want to see whether or not even uh, they're the ones we can trust. But here's what you have done. You've gone and you found corroboration from later Abbasid texts, in this case, Al-Tabari, to support uh, meant much of the um, the major ideas, such as the the camel, the lion, the, the lion man, the armory, and even the place Hira, which would be Al Kufa, and you show the Al Kufa mountains. So thank you. This is good because this shows then that the Abbasids were looking at a a faded image of what did happen, and they had their own agenda, their own narrative. They spilled they. Uh, spun it as they needed to, but at least what we can see is that these events happened not in the Hijaz, way up in, in this case, just south of what is Baghdad today and what is Kufa today, used to be called Hira. Thanks so much. Great to have these kind of corroborations. Terrific to have you come on board again. Okay, what are we going to do next? We're just in about two sentences. Uh, we'll be looking at the Ishmael. Well, I'm going to introduce you to something called Ishmaelite Judaism and the origin of uh, Ishmaelite Judaism. Okay, terrific. Can't wait. This is Jay and Joe, over and out.